What's up, everybody? I'm Nash Harrington with CraveOnline.com, and today we have a couple very special guests in studio. Jenny Alpert, she's a musician. We're going to talk about her new album a little bit. And Eric Boulanger, who is a uh, sound mastering uh, ex extraordinaire, I guess is the best <laughs> way to put that. it. <laughs> and also a musician. But uh, let's start with Jenny. Jenny, uh, you've produced a number of indie albums to date, uh, but you've also toured around to 14 different countries performing your music. You've had your music in multiple television shows, shows like Castle and The Real World all without being on a major label. How, how does that work? How do you promote yourself without the help of a major label? It's hard. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, they all said that it would be. No, um, you know what? It's passion driven, that's for sure. I think I coordinated. Um, coordinated albums, bringing together people that are really good at what they do in order to take music that's been written and uh, record it yeah. um, with great musicians. And then meeting someone like Eric, who's an incredible engineer, who mixes the music and then masters it yeah. in its full um, potential. So how I have been able to do all this as an independent artist um, has been very interesting. I'm I've sure. seen more couches and cars <laughs> than, um, than, than I ever thought I would. But uh, you know, when you know that you're meant to do something, um, it's really hard to turn your turn your back on it. Yeah. So at all costs and with all heart and soul, you do what you believe is what you're supposed to be doing on this earth. One of the things that I've always been driven to do is connect with an audience, whether it be through music or speaking or um, if, I'm, if I'm singing or writing lyrics that actually mean something yeah. to someone else. So writing and recording music is one of the mediums that I've been very fortunate to have a skill to do. And, and you've got your new album right now. Take a look at it right here. It's called Take It All. Did you write every song on this album and what kind of went in? What's the message of this album? Um, well, no, I didn't write all the songs okay. by myself. Usually um, in the past, that's what I would do. And I have a catalog of songs that I have written by myself. But sometimes when you meet other people, something new comes about that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. So um, this album has a lot of co-writes on it. Michael Blue was the producer and we wrote um, one of the songs on there called Who We Are. Um, another great writer I had an opportunity to work with is Sarah Hethcote and uh, we wrote the song Nobody Knows. Um, uh, the One is uh, a song that was co-written and co-produced as a matter of fact by um, another writer, Justin Andres. The project in, in some ways is sort of a conglomeration of all of the stepping stones that that in the developments that I sort of have gone through um, as an artist is all on one album right at this pivotal point and, yeah. I, and I'm very proud of it. And speaking of bringing in a team of people, Eric, uh, you not only worked on this album with her, but also on her, she said, on her, on her previous album as well. What's it like, the difference between working with an independent artist or an artist that's on a label? Are there big differences? Well, you know... Money. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Well, Money, sometimes funny. you'd be surprised, actually. <laughs> right. It's totally on a project-by-project project basis. That's the thing that's kind of neat right now, and it's a good question because that definition is changing. I mean, the spectrum is you could have Colby Clay, who's super successful on a major label, and it's, you know, what maybe the 70s would define as a major artist on a label right. versus you have Jenny who's putting out the same product Thank totally you. on her Aww. own <laughs> and in between then you also have artists like uh, you know Jackson Brown or Lyle Lovett who you know I've had the chance to work with too who are totally independent um, well Lyle is now independent mm -hmm. off of his label obviously very well known and you know he, he's at a point in his career where he can do that it makes sense for his fans and you know right. he can make a, a living and a career off of it yeah. so it really changes yeah and i do think that's true it makes sense like for example a really good example of a strong independent artist where it makes sense that she is that is ingrid michelson who was one yeah. of the most pivotal artists <clears throat> who f was right there in the process of where tv and film placements were like a major source of revenue in this apparent way they've always been there yeah but it was she was that artist that owned her masters and had a partnership with a music supervisor, which means that the revenue streams for her 
um, there was more. Like I like to think of the music industry as like a, a the, there's a rainbow, and there's a pot of gold. And if you pretend like that pot of gold, if you imagine this pot of gold is my bank account, and really how it works is there's all these colors of the rainbow, and each color represents a revenue stream. So let's say that you know red <clears throat> is your the, the royalty that you might receive from owning a master, or yeah. a part of the master, or then there's the publishing, or then there's the writing, mm -hmm. or then there's touring, and then there's other merch, and then there's, you know, speaking and things like that. Yeah, yeah. who's the leprechaun? Who's, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the real question. Right. Yeah. But if you, but the goal, you know, if you are involved in as many aspects of receiving and giving of these royalties, then you can really sustain yourself. And I think once that you have an avenue, some groundbreaking avenue, um, then it makes sense to be an indie artist. And yeah. I can say for sure, as for myself, I just sort of became indie because it was sort of my gusto or my chutzpah yeah. or my just kind of personality yeah. to just be an artist and create. And there have been drawbacks. For yeah. example, having a marketing machine, having some sort of something that allows people to hear the music yeah. and choose for themselves where it fits in their lives. And I think that when you're, when you're starting out as a musician and you're deciding which way to go, I really think there's a value in having relationships uh, for, for so that there is a platform for your music, whether it's major, subsidiary, indie, or mm -hmm. just out of your car or whatever, yeah. as long as you have a purpose. And for me, ultimately, I you know met America's Blood Centers. They are a nonprofit, and um, through just an idea of putting together a tour called Blood Driven and going to like blood centers and children's hospitals and blood drives, performing and offering what you have there in your hand, yes. a free download card for a single. Um, it To thank people for donating blood and encourage people more, it was sort of a personal thing for me. Yeah, cool, very cool. So I think you really have to think outside of yourself and really see what's important to you, to other people. And, yeah. Because music is just, it's just music in and of itself. But then I think we all have a bigger purpose. To wrap this up, where can people find you online? My website is obviously that first place, yeah. Jenny, Jenny Alpert. Dot com at Jenny Albert for Twitter. Okay. Um, I'm on Facebook. I have been social media ing for a little while now. Yeah. Well, Jenny, thank you for coming. Eric, for thank you for us. coming Thanks too. Thanks for having us. Uh, for these two amazing uh, musicians and artists, my name is Nash Harrington with CraveOnline.com. Yeah,